Jane Austen's Sense and Sensibility is a marvelous novel. For those of you who like movies, I personally think that the best version of it is the Emma Thompson variant. But there's some others to look at, but Emma Thompson definitely wins in my in my list. And Sense and Sensibility is a neat movie for the antimicrobial development world because it's got a great antibiotic story embedded in the middle of it. Remember Marianne, the younger sister, the passionate, emotional one who's crushed in love decides to go lay down in the field and develop hypothermia. And then she develops pneumonia. And this 20 year old kid is flat out in the bed, obtunded, critically ill. And the doc says, she is not doing as well as I would like. Well, Marianne's story is actually quite typical of pneumococcal pneumonia. So the pneumococcus streptococcus pneumoniae is a standard bacteria. It's present in the noses of a third of the people who are watching this YouTube video right now. It's there, but it's not doing you any harm. But under certain circumstances, it gets loose and it produces an infection of the lung called pneumonia. And when you have pneumococcal pneumonia and you don't get a good antibiotic for it, what happens to you is what happens to Marianne. She is out of it. She is critically ill. And indeed, what we know is that without a treatment, she has a mortality rate of about 15, 20%. Young, healthy kid, 15 to 20% chance of dying if she doesn't get a good antibiotic. I cannot pretend, Miss Dashwood, that your sister's condition is not very serious. You must prepare yourself. Her course was pretty typical. You get incredibly ill over a period of a few days, and then somewhere between seven and 10 days into your, your illness, and during this time, you really are laying in the bed, barely responding. One of two things happens. Either you die, or you do what Marianne did in the, in the movie. There's a scene where she sort of looks up and takes a breath and looks like she feels better. And that moment is called the crisis. And at that time, the fever breaks, and probably what's going on is she's developing antibodies against the pneumococcus. And at that point, you start to get better. But it's important to watch the movie to see what happens in the next days and weeks, because Marianne doesn't hop out of the, uh, out of the bed and, and go square dancing the next day. Marianne is still quite sick, and we see her over a period of time sitting uh, you know, in a chair with a blanket, and her lover, Colonel Brandon, is reading her love poetry. So there's this extended convalescence that would actually go on for months. So you know, Marianne's illness was really quite typical. It took a, a young woman, nearly killed her, and she was really you know, not able to do very much for several months. So let's think about sense and sensibility if there had been antibiotics available kind of fun to play with this idea. What would Marianne's course have been if she had had what we have today, a good standard antibiotic? Well, in fact, Marianne would have gotten better within 24 to 48 hours. She would have bounced right out of bed. Uh, there would have been none of this prolonged convalescence. Uh, Colonel Brandon would not have had the opportunity to gallop across the countryside to go and find the mom. I mean, all that stuff that led to them truly and deeply falling in love wouldn't have happened unless she'd had a superbug that didn't have a therapy, in which case she might have died, and we've had a different story entirely then. So in truth, I really wish that Marianne had had an antibiotic, but it did make for a great novel. It does make for a great story. One of those things to think about when you're inventing new drugs, the power of a new antibiotic is extraordinary. You can go from being nearly dead to being back to perfectly normal. Mm -hmm.